Welcome back to Mammy's house today. So glad you could join me again. And you know what time it is? It's picnic time. There's nothing better that goes with summer than a summer picnic, and that's indoors or outdoors. And today we're gonna do an indoor picnic because I think it's gonna rain outside. But I wanna have a picnic anyway because I've been dying, craving some barbecue chicken. And we're gonna make a homemade barbecue sauce. And the, I, love, I can't wait to do this. Can't wait to taste it. Can't wait to jar it. Can't wait to put it on the chicken and put it in the oven. And then also, I want to do a potato salad. My mom always made potato salads, or my mammy did. Somebody in the family always made a great potato salad. And it was the ones I remember is like with mustard or one with the sour cream and mayo. I'm gonna do, I prefer the sour cream and mayo potato salad, but I'm gonna do a loaded potato salad. We did this for the restaurant a few years back. I thought about it when I thought about all the picnic foods to fix for you today. So this is my version of the loaded baked potato salad. Cause I kinda like mine a little warmer but you can have it chilled as well. And I'm really excited because I really want to taste this. I've been doing it for the restaurant, but I'm going to do a little different today. But it's a banana cream patriotic dessert. And we're going to make sure, see if it's good. Just follow me through. We'll taste this and then I'll let you know if it's a yay or nay. Let's get started on my sauce because I want to start this because I'm going to set it over on my stove and let it simmer while I'm fixing everything else and then we'll put it on my chicken. So I've had some chicken cooking for about four hours th this morning early in my crock pot and I've got some dark meat and some white meat both so everybody gets whatever they want and I added a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper to taste, and of course, my paprika that I've got to smother all over the chicken to give that little crisp even in the crock pot. And it, it looks absolutely, you can eat it like it is, but it's even gonna be better when I put some of this homemade Mammy's barbecue sauce on it. So let's get started. All right, I got my big old pot here that I love. My daughter Jackie gave me this and I just love it. This thing is heavy. So what we're gonna do, let me get me a spoon. All right, so we're gonna start with, I'm gonna start with some tomato sauce. And I'm gonna do, this is a one can, so I'm gonna see it's about, it's about a 32 ounce can, two, three. You're gonna get about three and a half cups of tomato sauce out of this. And then I've got ketchup, and this is gonna be one cup of ketchup. So we're gonna add our tomato paste, uh, tomato paste, our tomato puree, which is nothing but a very, very rich tomato-y flavor, and it kinda of gives it that thickness too that I like, a thicker barbecue sauce. And we do this with bourbon as well. And if you want to add bourbon, I'm not going to today, but we do a lot at the restaurant. Uh, I like using a maple bourbon or a flavored bourbon. But any bourbon is good. I mean, we are the bourbon capital of the world. So we've got lots of great, great bourbons in Bargetown. Uh, some old bourbon, some new bourbon, some just wonderful bourbons here in Bargetown. So really, really proud of that. So I'm gonna put in one cup of brown sugar. I like a sweeter. I like the sweet and savory both. I can't say I just like the sweet because I like the savory. So I'm combining both sweet and savory into my barbecue sauce. Okay, get that in there. And I've got an apple cider vinegar you can use a red wine vinegar but i wanted the apple Woo! Ooh, gosh that's going to be so good already that with the brown sugar and the puree there we go i'm gonna give it a deep rich color that dark up dark brown sugar is what i use let's go ahead and have our lime juice 
And then our Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire. I think any way you say that is right because there's so many different ways. Okay, so I'm going to do my smoked paprika, which goes just about in anything I cook. <laughs> just love the paprika. The reason why I chose the smoked paprika because it's a gives you a little bit of a hot taste or that not you know not so sweet but it's not a burning taste with the tabasco or anything or the red peppers but if you like that hot because i've got children that's going to eat this my grandkids um you can add the hot sauce or whatever you like you know you make several different versions i'm going to do the paprika it gives it that little tingling flavor i've got garlic powder we're going to add probably a teaspoon and remember you can always add more, but you can't take away. So we want to make sure we get this right. So this right here is a honey Dijon mustard. It calls for regular mustard, what I've put in it, but I want that honey taste. And so I kind of want the flavor. Mm. Oh my gosh, that Dijon mustard is just so good. Remember the commercial? Dijon mustard. Mm. So, and it's a honey Dijon. We got that and then this is a lemon dill and I really like it mm, it's got that dill flavor because I want to put dill in here with a little bit of lemon and this is perfect it is going to be really really good I say just a teaspoon of that not much and I'm going to add just a little bit of water And then we're gonna let this cook and simmer while we're cooking everything else. And let's get it all mixed together here. And then I'm gonna put it on my stove and put it on. We're gonna put it on high, then it starts gonna boil, and then I'm gonna turn it back down to medium low and just let it simmer. Then we're gonna taste throughout, and if I need to add something, then I'll add. But it looks pretty good. I like that deep red brickish color. And that's what I've got right now. Oh, you can just bottle this up and can it. And there you go. I can't wait till it starts boiling. I gotta taste it now because oh, sometimes you make it good, sometimes you don't. And I wanna see. Oh, I could taste the paprika. Yep, I'm glad I tasted it because you know what? My salt and pepper is exactly what it needs. To level those flavors out. There we go. You want it? I like it sweet. I like everything sweet. Pinto beans, put sugar in. That's about everything I cook, put sugar in. But I don't want it to be overwhelmingly sweet. Like I said, I want to get that savory, savory taste in it too. Mm. So let's take it over to the stove. All right, I'm going to bring this over and bring my potato salad over here. I'll tell you what, we're going to get cleaned up. We're going to get all of this stuff cleaned up. I'm going to get started on our next dish. So you wait while we watch one of our wonderful sponsors. See you in a minute. So we've got our barbecue sauce simmering, our chicken in the crock pot. It's still on warm because it's cooked a good four hours. It's good. I'm just waiting to put some of that barbecue sauce on it. So we're going to start with the potato salad. Now, I've not been a big potato salad maker. Uh, it, you know, my mom made it a lot. She loved, loved potato salad. And I just never cared much for it. I didn't like the, the mustardy one. And I don't, I don't know if I just didn't like cold potatoes. And then, but once I did try to make it at the restaurant for a summer dish, I was, it was, came out like mashed potato salad. So 
a really good friend at the grocery store, Louise, Miss Louise. Uh, she, uh, she said her kids love her potato salad. You know, when she dies and goes to heaven, they want to make sure they get that potato salad recipe from her. So I thought that was a wonderful, wonderful story. So I asked her, I said, well, what's your trick? I said, because mine always turns into mush. And of course you have to cool them after you've cooked them, but you just take a fork in them. You just barely cook them enough to where they're not falling apart. I almost did it. Like this one kind of fell apart. So I knew immediately to turn it off and get some cold water on these potatoes and stick it in the fridge. So and I like using the red skin potatoes uh, because I like the skin on it. I mean, it's just so pretty too. They're pretty firm, but still not raw when you eat them. So they will keep my fingers crossed. That's just whenever I start putting the sauce on them. As, and then these are small ones anyway, so it's going to be easier to, um, to cut these up or it's faster anyway. Okay, so I've done pretty good. I'm going to take the ones out that kind of smashed. They kind of broke up. I don't know if it was me or the actual potato. All right, so we're going to get these back in the pot and we're going to start making my sour cream and mayo dressing. Okay, so here's the best part. You know how much I love sour cream. So we're going to put about one and a half cups of sour cream. Yeah, I like the, the mustard and the dill uh, potato salad too. That's, I think that's how my mom always made it. Um, but this one, when we tried this at the restaurant, oh gosh, I mean, you just fell in love with it. And this is really good, cold or warm, which I like mine warm better, but I can eat it cold too. And you're going to do about two cups of creamy mayo. Yum, yum. And then I'm going to add some shredded cheese. Now it calls for uh, cheddar. I'm going to use kind of a mixture of cheddar and mozzarella. Because this is what I would want on my baked potato. Because I think of the loaded baked potato. And what all I would want on that. Stir this up a little bit. I am really enjoying this summer so much so you know when you're enjoying the a season when it just goes by so fast and it's middle of June and I'm like what happened to the first of June yesterday was June 1st I mean it was like where did it, Memorial Day was just here where did it go it went by really really fast now what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of milk because I want this not to tear up my potatoes so I'm gonna add a little bit of milk you know when you get a sauce that's a kind of a thicker sauce it's kind of hard to get it in and maneuver it and that's where I always go wrong because trying to maneuver it I'm kind of really tearing up my potatoes. So we're gonna loosen it up with just a little bit of milk and see if that helps that pour over it. We loved having reunions and I know you talk, I talk about reunions all the time, but that's what the summertime reminds me of is the Bradfordsville, going to Bradfordsville to the Gribbins reunion with uh, Paw Paw and Aunt Burn and Aunt Bobby and all my uncles aunts and uncles and the best part about it are cousins you know growing up your cousins was your best friends you'll never forget those memories and at the family reunions i think that we all remember them so well or have such fond memories of them so well is because of the food it was the food that we thought of the all the potato salad was at the family reunion or at the picnic and with the picnic tables and and i'm telling you so let me tell you i've got to get the story out uh i had thought about doing a picnic theme uh, because i love having picnics uh, i love the picnic food and i wanted to do i've just been craving barbecue chicken and it just reminds me of outdoor you know theme picnic so anyways at the restaurant yesterday and it's getting all my stuff prepared and i had gone out to talk to my daughter and she said one of your um friends 
one of your fans. She said, one of your fans brought you a present. I'm like, well, I love presents. <laughs> Which fan was it? I have fans. I really have fans. And I'm telling you, it just makes me the proudest mammy ever. But anyway, so I'm going, I'm thinking about my show, getting it all prepped, prepared for it. And I open the box and lo and behold, a picnic basket. She had heard me talk about having picnics uh, on my previous shows and this one is a oh and this is the kind of baskets I love the old baskets oh that's wood and look at that how that opens and closes and so I mean it's just perfect and I have to thank Pamela Downs thank you so much and I'm sorry I missed you yesterday you must have been going out one door and out and out the in one door and out the back but I just can't thank you enough. Uh, you read my mind and like you knew this is the show I was going to do today. So I can't wait till you see this. Pamela, thank you for being a great customer, a great friend, and most of all, a great fan. Mwah! Thank you. So there you go. So we actually got a picnic basket today. <laughs> so I do have wonderful fans that watch my show. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so just keep watching. I hope you really, really enjoy it. Just all my memories of Bradfordsville, my dad and my papa and Mammy Clyde died. My dad's mother, she died fairly early, but I was, I was young enough to remember, old enough to remember, but still young. And she's the one that gave me my first set of pots and pan dishes. I thought it was the best Chris. I didn't even need anything from Santa Claus after that. That big box with pots and pans in it. I'll never forget it. And I wish I still had it. Oh, these are chives. And I love chives. Oh, my gosh. Not going to make me cry like the onions. Ooh, glad. I'm not adding onions to this, but I do like these chives. But we would always, you know... You know, in the summer, I mean, somebody was always eating outside. And us as kids, we'd get in the old picnic basket, put us some old, you know, some food in there, some grapes and walnuts and whatever, biscuit, old biscuits left over from the morning, and we'd have it set, and we would... We would go drink from a drink from a spring. Now I know y'all drank from a spring, and then, gosh, do you remember? Does anybody remember sour grass? You know, it was crazy. I'm not gonna tell the story until somebody calls me and tells me they know what it is. The sour grass. I think that's what it's called. And then the oh, what is it? The the honeysuckles. Honeysuckles. Oh, just love the honeysuckles. Oh my gosh. Oh. Good old times, good old memories on uh, in Bridersville. We had the funnest times with our cousins in Bridersville. My Aunt Byrne literally was the best aunt ever. All her recipes, I still have, have not perfected the cornbread in the iron skillet with the crunch on the outside and that soft on the inside. But um, I love her to death. We have so many good memories, all the stories she would tell us. And um, Paul Paul was a great, great grand. He was a wonderful grandfather and uh, a farmer. Uh, Bradfordsville was really, really fun. You had all the knobs and the creeks to go through and you had a little uh, diving water where you could, you know, walk down the creek and jump in. and. We were gone from sun up to sundown every day. I'm telling you, while Daddy was in the garden or helping Papa do something with the horses, and uh, it was just we were there all summer long. So anyway, I'm gonna put my chives in here. Woo! They weren't as bad as the onion, but they had like they were getting there. So I had to finish up my story so I can get them in here. Oh well, that's already turning out so pretty. Summer dishes are so colorful and pretty you have all different greens and yellows and reds and blues and we're going to have a colorful colorful uh, dinner today so okay i'm going to do the tomatoes and the bacon i don't know let's go ahead and put a little bit of bacon in here yep that's what i want to do but i want to put some save some for the topping and then tomatoes let's get those chopped with a little fancy tomato slicer fun fun love using this 
And these little cherry tomatoes are perfect. So, it's been a good summer already. I'm already enjoying it. Look there. Hmm. <laughs> That's so much fun. It's fun to do. Let's put those in there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of parsley. But I think I'm going to use that and add that on top. Put it in the oven. Oh my gosh, this is, I love, love fixing pretty food. I used to play house or play kitchen. I don't know what you would have called it when I was little. And I'd go to the barn and I'd get me some eggs and some dirt and some water. And, you know, I would just get the green, the grass, the honeysuckles, whatever. And I used to play. And I remember uh, you'd have an old stove or something out in the barn. There was always something that you can make make believe, you know, and I was good at doing that <laughs> um, out there. So just, I really love pretty food. It's the appearance. So let's put it on our chilled potatoes. All right, save some of that. You know what? I'm a little too late, but I'm going to taste it. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's really good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just, I don't want to take my hands in it. I would if I have gloves, but I don't have them. So let's get a couple of these. I wonder who invented potato salad. I know my Mammy Clyde probably made it a lot. You know, you just get burnt out on your mashed potatoes to come back in there and then pretty good. I think I've liked it more as I've gotten older or old or um, than I did when I was younger. Of course, you always just want to mash potatoes. Oh, that's not bad. It's working out pretty good. Thank you, Louise, for giving me that tip. We would have had mashed loaded baked potato salad. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I just love it. So almost done. So the reason I want to bake it, so now we're going to make it pretty. I'm going to clean off the sides. I'm going to come out of the oven pretty. Now it's fine. I mean fine. Just the way it is. Let's see. If we ate it cold, Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to leave it like that or bake it. Oh, I'm torn. Well, that's really, really good. I'm going to cut the rest of my potato tomatoes up. Oh, that's fine. Doing that. So we're going to put them. Let's do some cheese. over top I want to bake it just because I told you I would wink wink <laughs> I'm gonna taste it both ways but now I know I can do this so we're gonna put the rest of our bacon good old thick hickory smoked bacon gosh nothing better Look at that big old thick piece of bacon It'll be a good piece all right, we're going to put some parsley, some dried parsley, just for color on top of that. Boy, I'll tell you what, you'd be, you'd be the uh, queen of the picnic with this recipe. And then we're going to put some of our tomatoes on here. Gosh, that looks so pretty. Love it, love it. This is a good day to be a potato salad. Now we're going to put him in the oven and I'm going to clean up and then we're going to get started on by, this is the first time I've done this recipe, but I can't, it's just in my head and I'm just wanting to do it. I was going to do a pie version. I've been doing that at the restaurant, but we're going to do just a banana something dish, you know, patriotic banana dessert. So let's get this in the oven. We're going to uh, go to a commercial bake from one of my wonderful, wonderful favorite sponsors. And then we'll be right back and we'll start that beautiful banana, patriotic dessert, da, 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 da. See ya. All right, 
right, real quick before I start my dessert. Uh, anybody know anything about any pork and beans at a picnic, at a reunion, or at your mama's house? I remember we would have pork and beans almost with everything, especially hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff. So I love, love pork and beans. And you can eat them as just like potato salad, cold or warm, hot or whatever. I think we always ate ours cold. I know seems like we just always had cold pork and beans. But I'm gonna do baked beans. And I've got some melted butter in here. Put them right in here. I'm gonna add a little uh, brown sugar to them. And got, I had a little bacon grease in with my butter that where I had fried that bacon earlier this morning. So I had some bacon grease in with my butter. And, or you can use regular bacon. I'm gonna do salt and pepper. So, but uh, anyway, I wanted to have these today and I've got my barbecue chips over here. And I wanted to see, does anybody remember or have any memories of barbecue chips and pork and beans, baked beans? I'm just gonna let you wait at the end of the show. Well, when they're done and I bring them out of the oven, cold or hot even, how we put together our barbecue chips and our pork and beans. Do you have any memories of that? It's kind of like uh, when you went to the skating rink and you put, you got your Coca-Cola out of the machine and you put your peanuts in your Coca-Cola. <laughs> What's the best thing ever? Did y'all do that? Oh my gosh, that just reminds me too of the days of skating rink at Ernest. Uncle Ernest, we were, I don't know if he was my uncle, he was some kin to me, but Ernest had the skating rink in Brywardsville, and we'd get to go, I guess, every Friday, Saturday, if we were lucky, but usually once a Saturday or something, and all of us would go, and I'll tell you, us Gribbenses, we could skate like that, you know how your foot went back like that, and then you'd go down, your leg bit out like that, and you'd be skating around. I was that person. I was always that person. <laughs> On the end, they got thrown into the wall or the seat. They had the concrete floor. I cannot skate on a wood floor these days. Barely skate at all. And then me and my sister, I had red skates, red leather sparkly skates with the pom-pom on them. My sister, of course, had the white and on hers with the pom-pom. My cousin Vera had the white too. I was the wild one, had to have the red. Mm -hmm -hmm. But anyway, oh, those were the best days of my life at the skating rink and the um, graveyard was all, it's huge, huge graveyard. And it went back into the 16, 1700s and all of our family, you know, is there. And so we would sneak over if daddy left to go see Thornton or somebody, one of his brothers, we would sneak over to the graveyard. Wow, we thought that was so bad, but I think we would have got spanked if we came out of the skating ring. We would walk in our skates. Ooh, we were rebels sneaking off to the graveyard. But anyway, let's get started on a banana pie. But that was so much fun. That all that story came about because of pork and beans and barbecue chips. So let's get started on our banana dessert. And I'll let you name it. Why don't, why don't we just do that? You all can name it for me. So we're gonna do our graham cracker crust first. Spray this, make sure it's clean. Spray your dish. I don't want anything sticking. A little whew, aerosol <laughs> butter spray. And then we're gonna put some butter with our graham cracker crumbs. And I need a couple of tablespoons of sugar. All right. Get a fork, a little bit easier with the fork. I don't know why, I've just been craving bananas like crazy. Just make sure it's all damp with all the butter. Might as well get my hands in there, I might have to do it anyway. We're gonna press it in here like if it was a pie shell. Let's make it all even. Made a little extra, so I might have to make a little extra pies for, this is gonna be so good. I'd have to make two of them. It's gonna go fast, I would think. Oh yeah, 
That is perfect with that butter. Mmm. Everything's good with butter on it. Y'all been having a good time with the grandkids this summer. They've been at the restaurant a lot. And they're kind of getting old enough to where they can go down and help wipe tables off. And just fun for them to be part of what we do. Wash my hands. Got a little butter on them. Need my Aunt Linda here to keep up my dishes. And that's what we did as kids. We kept up the dishes. You know, back then, I tell you, and I think that's why, not that I'm, I know what I'm doing at the restaurant, but it kind of just fell into place because we did it when we were kids. We come from such large families that, you know, it was worked, you know, you worked those kitchens just like you did your farm as a business. You had certain things to do and you had to do them. So everything's looking really, really good in here. Potato salad looks good. And we're gonna bake this for about 12 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna grab my pot. Start this. Get all my ingredients. So we're gonna add the sugar and I've got two cups of sugar. And I like using cornstarch. So three tablespoons and I do heaping because I'd rather have too much than not enough. All right, there we go. If it's too thick and you have to add a little bit more milk and it's gonna hurt anything. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a banana, a banana pudding because it's got all that banana flavor. If you've ever fixed you a boxed jello banana pudding, it's just, just that banana and I really want that really, really strong banana taste into this filling. So anyway, we're gonna go do two cups of milk. Okay, so I'm gonna get my sugar. We're gonna go two cups of milk. There we go. And we're gonna take it over to the stove top. And we're going to stir and then we're going to add our three egg yolks. Once I get all of this st stirred up together. I just love all my little red, my blues, and I tell you, one of my, uh, uh, actually just a really good friend of ours, because we were next door neighbors to at Mary's, Mary for 10 years and she just helped me with everything and design wise and and this and that oh, just very very sweet woman so but i think her store should be called ask mary because every time i go in there and ask mary a question i come out with this these beautiful melamine plates uh oh gosh i mean that is just gorgeous and how it matches perfect and just my bows the set of bows to put all my leftovers in i can't wait to use those and of course her beautiful flower arrangements are just gorgeous now all that's mixed together everything's really smooth my cornstarch is in there so i'm gonna add my three egg yolks Turn and turn until it thickens up. So while we're over here, we got to stir. Don't walk away from it. It will burn and you'll have little black specks in your filling. But, woo, don't let it splash. Like, oh, look at that. Oh, and that's going to splash too. That's going to be really good. I'm going to close it before it splashes in my pie. And everything's looking good inside here. So we're all just on schedule. I had the pleasure of meeting, and I've got the wrong color on for it, one of my dad's favorite teams. Actually, my family's UK, been UK fans my whole life. I'm not kidding you. The brothers, the Gribbins brothers, dad, and uh, Andy and Jerry, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm thinking they're all still UK. I don't know if they went over or 
what, but I won't name any more because I might get in trouble. But uh, anyway, just always been big UK fans. So when John Calipari showed up at Mammy's Kitchen on the patio, I thought I was going to faint. I just knew, knew I had to say hello like 27 times. <laughs> I don't like bothering people, but I know I do a lot. Uh, and then I'm like, gosh, I should have just let them eat in peace. But I get so excited when all the people come in there. Uh, John Calipari and then all my regulars. I know I talk their heads off sometimes, but I'm just excited to see them every day. So, but yeah, he came into the restaurant and ate. And I was, the only thing I need to say to him is my dad loved you and he would throw a shoe at us if we walked in front of the TV when we were little kids. Get out from TV! I'm watching the ball game! Two points down! Go fast a lot over that. Boy, Kentucky lost. We would go right upstairs and go to bed. He'd be in a bad mood for days. Well, it was so bad then that today, you know, he can't even watch a game. He has to go ride around. And then he'll call you. And if you're in a good mood, you're like, Daddy, we're up. You know, but she's like, oh, I'm not answering. Uh-uh. If we're down. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. I tell that story, but yep. All right, we're starting to thicken up, and that's exactly what we want to do. I want it to get it really good, thick and creamy. All right, and then when it, you know, that's about ready. I'm staying away from it because it will pop on you. And I'm going to turn that off. And then we're immediately, oh gosh, that is perfect, guys. Let's, let's bring it back over. And then we get the next three ingredients in it and it'll be done. Okay, so what we're gonna do, take that out. Well, and I'm gonna put a tablespoon of butter. Uh, let's see if I can get that. <clears throat> no. So we're gonna add a tablespoon of butter. Let's let that melt in there. And instead of a vanilla extract, I want a clear extract. So I got a banana extract. So we pour that teaspoon in there and a pinch of salt to bring all those flavors out. Oh, the smell, can't beat it. So let's mix this all in together. Get that butter melted, pretty hot still. Oh, that smells divine. Oh, that smells so good. Trying to get that little pat of butter in there. Melt it. All right. So we're going to get our pie crust out. Graham cracker crust out. And get this out and ready. I'll be right back. So we've got our ground cracker crust, and you see it's good and brown. I'm gonna put this beautiful color, this banana filling in here. It turned out perfect. Couldn't have done it better. And it smells so good. And I wanna add every bit of it. Nothing can't lick that pan, that's for sure. All right, so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna stick it in the fridge, let it chill, give it some time to set, and we're gonna cut the berries up for the top. So just to give it a minute. I'm gonna have my chicken in the oven a little bit hotter so this is done. This is all that it needs. And oh my goodness, that, that's a great, great potato salad. Mm. So let's put him right here. Our, our pork and beans. Ooh, look at that. That looks divine, divine. Shut that. Oh. Yes. 
Okay. Now I want to go ahead while our dessert is chilling. I want to go ahead and get our chicken prep. My barbecue sauce is ready. The chicken is more than ready. So let's get it in here and then we'll put some sauce on it and we're going to get that oven really hot so I can get some burnt spaces on there. All right, so we're going to get our chicken. Oh goodness, that looks good, good. So I'm going to get my oven really good and hot. So it's all about the sauce. Got some really good pieces here and I can see that paprika on there. I like the white meat. My husband likes the dark. Oh, that one just fell apart. Just exactly how you want it to do. It's going to be so pretty. <laughs> if I can get his chicken leg out of there. But he could eat 10 chicken legs. And our granddaughter Bailey could too. She loves them just like her palp. And we're just going to get some of this sauce. Get me a ladle. Your lady who. My dad can do that better than anybody in the world. He can yodel so good. I'm not very good at it, as you can tell, but I try. <laughs> you lay I don't know why the chicken made me think of that. Yodel. You don't hear anybody yodel these days, do you? Stir that sauce. Oh, I think that's perfect. I did add, I had forgotten to add, but what my special ingredient that I wanted to work with this time was a cinnamon extract or you can just use you know your ground cinnamon or I put a cinnamon stick in there that's what I'm gonna do the next time and then also my butter just to give that a little bit more of a savory so I added the cinnamon and the butter so that's been in there for a while so we're gonna put some of this over and you can actually can this sauce Keep it for a while. Keep it for our next party, our next picnic. There you go. I'm gonna put it in my hot, hot oven. And let it cook away. Here we go. You lay hee hoo. All right, so I've got my berries cut up, but I'm still waiting for that to chill just a little bit longer. And I've got my chicken over here. Let's see how it's doing. Okay, that's really, really good and hot. I want it on broil because I kind of want to get that black chicken going in there. Kind of get my pastry brush in there. Oh yeah, that looks good, good, good. My husband's gonna love this today. The fly man. All right, so I want to do just one more thing. My sister Lisa, my big sister, she's my best friend. I just love her to death. She makes this dip every time we have something, you know, Christmas or July 4th or whenever, you know, we have something. Lisa will bring this. Oh, Lisa, yeah, you got your three little ingredients. I thought you had like 10 ingredients in this. When I called her for the recipe, it's like three, th three ingredients. But my sister, and of course, one of the ingredients, the main ingredient is ketchup. Now, my sister, if you're one of those people, when we were younger, had ketchup on everything, everything, her eggs, I mean, from breakfast to lunch to dinner, Lisa ate ketchup. I didn't, but Lisa did. But it was with cream cheese. Then they are good. Pork's better. So I hope I'm doing this right. And I'm like, what's the name of it, Lisa? And she just like, ketchup dip. I mean, I guess it's just ketchup dip. But it's so good. I really don't know how much she added. She wouldn't tell me that. I remember one time I was so mad. I was at home with Mama. And I was wanting to make some brownies. And Lisa and Vera, Lisa was over at Vera's house. And she had, they had the recipe. Why they had the recipe, I don't know. But it was just a certain recipe that we, how we fixed it. And we were young. And I was crying. They wouldn't give me the recipe. They were mean to me. They bullied me. No. Uh, but anyway, I never got that recipe. And I cried. Went and told Mama. And of course, Lisa was always Daddy's favorite. I was always Ma Mama's favorite, I think. 
And then Marty was mine and Lisa's, my young, our younger brother. He was everybody's favorite. He was full rot rotten. Me and Lisa was gone, and he got everything, everything. But me and my mom were more alike, and then Lisa and my dad are a lot alike. So I'm going to see. I know I've seen her just stir away. Oh, it's starting to look like it. It is so good, I'm telling you. Just for the heck of it, if you got some cream cheese, ketchup, and garlic powder, powder laying around, I think it was a little bit redder. I really never just got the concept of what she put in it. But, and of course, she would chill it a little bit. Yeah. This is looking just get my potato chips. All right. Let me see. More garlic, which I knew that. Mmm. Mm. It's a smile on my face. Just like my sister. Lisa was always the good one. And I was always the mean one. And Marty just was out there doing his own thing with his numb chucks and his little karate stuff and dirt bike, G.I. Joe's, uh, the thumb knock, the the um, the wrestling guys in the ring and you battle bots or whatever. And me and Lisa had the little knockers. They were real hard on each end on a string and you knock, 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 knock and hit your head. Oh, so, gosh, I'd love to have those. All right. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. Did a good job on that, Lisa. All right, it's time to take this chicken out. Then we'll do this, and then we're gonna be ready to eat really, really soon. Woo! And steam bath. Oh, that's great. Oh my gosh. Love it, love it, love it. It's a beautiful meal right there now. Now let's just finish this up. I can't wait, wait to taste all of this. All right, so. I'm going to do just the berries. I'm going to do just going all the way across. It's going to be a little bit easier. Let me start from here. Here. So let's do a banana next. And then it's kind of a patriotic pie, but it doesn't matter. It's going to taste good, so it doesn't even need a name. So let's go through here and get some bananas on that line. I'll straighten them out when I get done. It's going to be good. It's going to be real good. Mammy's Merry Berry Banana Pie, Patriotic Pie. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, that looks good. It's starting to look really, really pretty. Oh my goodness, blueberries. I love blueberries. These are fresh, fresh blueberries. I could see my mammy Clyde making the pie like this, having some fresh fruit from the orchard or from town. All right, and I'm gonna do strawberries. One more layer of strawberries. Well, how pretty is that? And I match. Oh my goodness. That is wonderful. Mammy's Mary Berry. You all tell me what the name of this is. I really don't know. It's just going to be yummy, yummy. <laughs> Anything fruit, strawberries, banana in it. It's going to be perfect. Decorating it. I love that strawberry and banana flavor. I do this a lot on Sundays with my French toast or my pancakes. That's just perfect. Alrighty. Oh my gosh. I think this is a perfect plate. Mary's plate and the perfect food to go on at Mary's melamine plate. I mean, that is gorgeous. I need to have my friends over for this little picnic, a friendship picnic. There's no reason. There's always a reason 
to have a picnic, whether it's raining or it's the sun's out with your friends, with your family, with your children, with your grandchildren, or just by yourself. I've got some great tea right here. I had some strawberries and lemons left over. So let's add that, that to that tea. Let that steep, that's really good. I've got my potato salad, my chicken, my pork and beans, which I baked, and my sister's dip, Lisa's dip. Now, the reason why in the beginning of the show I was telling you about what barbecue chips got to do with pork and beans, and this is what, and I don't know if this is a Bradfordsville thing, what my dad taught us to do, but we would take our barbecue chips and crumble them in our baked beans, pork and beans, cold or warmed up. And that was the best thing ever. Just chop them up in there. Mm. Oh! Just like the good old days in Bradfordsville. Oh my gosh. You gotta try it. If you hadn't tried it when you were a kid, which I'm sure a lot of you have, then at least try it now. Oh, and those beans are very good. Thumbs up on the pork and baked beans. All right, I don't know what to try next. I'm gonna leave the potato salad to last. So we're gonna try my chicken. Oh my gosh, it's falling, just falling apart. It is, and my sauce is good enough to be bottled. It was worth all those ingredients, it really was. Oh wow. Moist. Mmm. So good. You can put that on anything. You can put that on a candy bar, it'd be good. Mmm. Wow. That is good. You can bake that the way I baked it in the oven on broil after your chicken's done, or you could put that in your crock pot and let it soak into that chicken. But that, you can't find a better piece of chicken. That's a winner, winner chicken dinner right there. Mm. Oh, I want to set, eat, eat, eat. But the good taste test is, now we tasted it when it was cold and it was perfect. It was good. It was good, good. Now, let's taste it now. I want that, I want every bite of everything, that bacon, potato, everything that was in that mix. Um, Woo, doggies. Got some good baked potato. Mmm. Mm. Now that, mm, right there, is a perfect meal. Cheers. Yum. I'm going to taste my sister's dip. Oh, my gosh. I just want to call everybody I know right now and tell them come on over. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to set this aside for right now because I really want to try our mystery patriotic dessert. So pretty. Mm. Here's the real test though. It's still, it, I like pretty food, but it's still got to taste good. Oh my goodness. Ooh, that crust. And it's still warm. It could chill a little bit longer, but I can't wait. All right. Whoops. Lost the blueberry. All right. Cut the strawberry. I want to get the banana. Let's see how it came out. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Oh. That couldn't have turned out any better, I tell you. I'll have to watch the show to see how I even made it so I can give you this recipe. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You know, it's not heavy. It's like a custard with that banana flavor. I'm really glad that I added the jello pudding, give it that big banana blast in your mouth 
Oh my gosh. Mm. You're gonna love this. And it's a beautiful dish. Take to any of your summer parties. So that's gonna be all. I'm gonna get back over here to my plate, then I can finish this off, and then it's gonna be nap time for this old mammy today. Thank you all so much for joining me. Come back for our final show for the summer season, our July 4th Hit It All party. I can't wait. I hope you enjoy all my recipes. Come to the restaurant. Uh, Lakin's going to have all these recipes waiting for you. And thank you so much. See you later. Love you. And don't forget, shop local, drink local, eat local, and bank local. Love you to death. Bye, guys. Thank you.